Are you there? There he is. Yes, Hi, I am a little different location. Hopefully that's a little better for you. Oh, hey, Tom, we're, we certainly are happy to be speaking with you this morning, our last time live with you. Where exactly are you calling from? Uh, I'm at the press center at the uh, Alpine venue in Rosa Hattour, getting ready for the start of the second run of the uh, women's slalom coming up right now in just a little bit less than a half hour. McKellar Schiffer right now in the lead. Very cool. A, a significant lead, as I understand it. What, five tenths? Yeah, she's up 0.49 right now, just about five tenths, and a very good first run. She's got the lead over Maria Hoffel Risha. Uh, three Americans uh, in the uh, running right now. Racy Stiegler right now standing in. in uh, uh, actually 20th position and Julia Ford standing in the 30th uh, second run coming up and you can watch it all live 915 Park City time at NBCOlympics.com. Absolutely. Tom, we're a little jealous of you getting to be there for all of that and uh, certainly we're jealous uh, of uh, being la last night at the half pipe for Maddie Bowman's mm -hmm. big win. Yeah, that was just an amazing performance by Maddie Bowman uh, in the half pipe. A really strong U.S. presence in all of the new free skiing events. Uh, uh, the two events, slope style and half pipe, uh, the 12 medals awarded there. The U.S. took 50% of those with six and three of those gold. So uh, Maddie Bowman winning last night in the pipe, and it was David Wise two nights earlier, and that matches up with Josh Christensen of Park City, who won leading the American Sweep back uh, last week. And uh, in addition to that, Devin Logan kicking it off uh, in what seems like an eternity ago now uh, in the opening week of the games, finishing with the silver medal. So uh, maybe some of the folks in Park City caught the boys, uh, Slope Style Boys. They were on the Letterman Show last night and they've got a whole meaty tour going right now in New York City. Awesome. Well, I wanted to talk about just the, in general, how incredible the U.S. team has done with anything that involves extreme sports, any of the freestyle <laughs> events, uh, you know, the, uh, anything on a snowboard just about. It's just been awesome. We've, we've done so well. Yeah, it's really been an amazing Olympics uh, for the uh, free skiing and snowboarding side. Uh, right now, the medal count is at 16 for skiing and snowboarding. We're in a dead heat with Norway. Norway has 16, and we have exactly the same gold, silver, and bronze. So it'll be interesting how that comes out this weekend. For sure, the U.S. is going to be the underdog to take the uh, uh, medals title from Norway. Uh, we won it in 2010. Uh, when 17 athletes won 21 medals right now, it's looking like 16 medals possible, one from Michaela Schiffrin here tonight, maybe one from Justin Ryder in the Alpine Parallel Slalom tomorrow. We'll have to see on that. Norway, though, is going to be stacked and loaded in the cross-country events with a 30K uh, 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 event for the women on Saturday and the men doing a 50K on Sunday. So uh, wow. cross our fingers, get a little luck, maybe we'll lead the medal count. Well, this is a tough weekend because Norway is very competitive on this last weekend, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And uh, Norway has not had the strongest games in cross country as they'd anticipated. Merit Bjorgen with the anticipated five gold medals that did not come to pass. Norway finishing out of the medals in the uh, relay event uh, for the women. So uh, we'll see what happens this weekend. But I think uh, odds are that Norway's going to pick up more medals than we will this weekend. And it may be that we're not going to defend that title that we won in Vancouver. Folks, this is for skiing and snowboarding. It's not the overall medal count, but right now uh, for the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, we're standing at 16 medals. When does Justin race? Uh, Justin in the Parallel Slalom races tomorrow. It's the final snowboarding event of the games, and uh, really not a whole lot on the docket. The only other thing we have is men's slalom coming up tomorrow night. I'm going to be winging my way home starting on Sunday, going up to Moscow, and then coming back to Park City on Monday. Wow, that's incredible. Hey, Tom, I wanted to know a little bit more about Michaela quickly. We know this is, being, this is a huge deal for her at mm -hmm. such a young age. Have you been able to sense her, her attitude and really her, what, what's her game face like going into this? What is the sense you get in being around her and watching her perform? Well, she's just very professional in how she conducts herself. I mean, she's grown up in the sport, spent a lot of time living in Europe, so she really knows her way around the sport. So she's really quite comfortable with everything right now. She is suffering from a cold and did have a little problem breathing on the first run. Uh, hopefully that's not going to thwart her. She certainly looked good in that first run, uh, but definitely a little bit under the weather. So slime's pretty tricky, though, and the course conditions are going to be challenging. Uh, it's uh, soft snow, and the first course was what she said was peeling away. So as you know, the first skiers came down, their, their edges actually peeled the top layer of snow away and what that did is it created big ruts so she's going to be she went number six in the first run she's going to be going number 30 in the second run and she for sure is going to have a tough course to deal with half second lead as she said after the first run that's really not very much so uh it's pretty much anybody's race still but it is nice that she has that 0.49 cushion well, we uh, only have just another moment left, so we're going to give you a hard time about still not having that Russian hat yet. We're <laughs> expecting on, you to Tom. bring that back to our studio. Uh, feel free to bring one for me, too. I'll wear it with you if, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> well, it's funny. I actually have one, and unfortunately, I don't have it in my bag tonight, Aww. but I, I did get one for our granddaughter, and that's coming home. And uh, You'll have to wear it on uh, Tuesday. 
keeps you on. I'll, I'll wear it when I come in. Oh, thank you. Hey, last thing for you, Tom, we're wrapping up in about 15 seconds here. What has been the most standout moment for you and your favorite part about being there? You know, it's, it's, it's always hard to pick uh, favorite medals, and there's been really so many of them. But I tell you, Ted Ligeti's medal the other day was just a monumental. And I think if there were two really poignant, happy moments, it was the, uh, uh, the celebration of Todd Lodwick's retirement after six Olympics and Ted Ligeti's uh, uh, second gold medal, uh, really an historic one. And uh, close behind that, Bodie Miller and Andrew Weibrick finishing 2-3 uh, uh, in the uh, Super G last weekend. Yeah, absolutely. TK, thank you so very much for being yeah, with us thank you. Uh, live from Sochi uh, so many times. We certainly appreciate it. We've got to live that experience through you. It's been uh, a tremendous thing. So thank you so very much. Well, it's been a lot of fun. We look forward to being back in Park City with you next week. In Park City, thanks for watching. Thanks very much, Tom. Once again, that is Tom Kelly with uh, the USSA. Huge thank you to him for spending time with us throughout this.